I found myself somewhere in the middle of nowhere. And I mean literally the middle of nowhere. There is nothing around me except for forests, green stuff, green pine trees, just forest. To give you a better perspective of what this looks like, this is the view from up above from Google Earth. There's not much there. Uh, the sandy bits you can see, those are gold mines or asbestos mines. And the darker bits are lakes, waterways and rivers, including the Montreal River. But exactly where am I? Well, Google Maps will show you right now. This is Google Earth image as I spin around. Mastinicon Lake, located west of Metachuan, which is part of the Montreal River system. And this is exactly where I'm going to be for the next week. But it wasn't that easy getting here. It took us a whole eight hours to get to this point, including 30 minutes driving on a road like this, which just kept going on and on and on, and the dust was unbearable. But after eight hours, we made it. Welcome to Lake Mistinicon, 29 kilometers of an amazing lake ready for me to explore. Fish, bugs, and I've been eating alive blood everywhere and wildfires get out of here and beat the fire it all happened on the last couple of days of the trip enjoy hello to you all and welcome to a new lake erie vlogger adventure this time we're on a different water patch we're in northern ontario and we're on lake mistinicon which is just to the uh, west of uh, Metachuan, uh, which is located, what, 100, 150 kilometers north of Sudbury, something like that, maybe more, I'm not too sure. So anyway, we did this lake last year, but we did the south end. And today I'm gonna go north as far as I can, see what I can see, but the only problem is, I forgot my, uh, my memory card for my other GoPro, so I'm just using the one today. So we're on the old GoPro 8, the, the tent is left behind in the house there. Uh, little hut over there. So uh, normally we go, down there but today we're gonna go up and around and north and see what we can see uh, weather today is expected to be 32 degrees it's the first time we've seen clouds uh, in five days since we've been here and we're expecting possible scattered thunderstorms later on so uh, I've got to try and get out before the daytime heating really kicks in then I'm gonna meet up with the guys fishing later on so in the meantime I'm gonna head north and uh, see what we can see if we see anything we'll record it and have some fun so uh, join me on this latest adventure my name is Nigel I am the Lake Erie vlogger and I'm on Lake Mistinicon. 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 It's got the name then. Let's go.
looks higher than the last one. Should be. Whack! <laughs> Whacked in the head by a fucking... My fishing line. Oh, this is pretty out here. There isn't actually much to see. Every lake starts to look the same, I guess. But hey, I'm just here for relaxation, unwind, mental health. Not like Lake Erie, where you have always something going on. A major coastline, towns, cities, communities all dotted around the place. Here, pine trees, and lots of them. eagle just flying over there two of them actually maybe they'll come around we'll get a better shot of them the two bald eagles shame they're going into the sun wow you know what i'm gonna sit here for a minute and just take all this in because <coughs> this it's pretty shallow here by the way lots of tree bits sticking up over there but this is uh, peaceful. I think I'm the only human play around here for probably about five miles each side of me. There's those eagles again. So the guys that I'm up here with who stay back fishing, uh, they told me they've been up to the north end before, but they've never gone past the bridge. Now I know, now I know why they don't go past the bridge, or not many people do. It is very, very shallow in many places. Uh, my depth finder was showing quite a lot of areas were only four or five feet deep, and you had to work your way around, then you'll find yourself a nice little channel uh, in, the, uh, in the waterway here, which would be about 15 to 20 feet. And if you slightly go off to the left or slightly to the right, you're back in four or five feet water. So um, basically a navigational system was definitely required for this part of the lake. If I'm not mistaken, if I go straight ahead, that's going to take me right up to uh, the Montreal River where this part of the lake ends and the dam. So we're going to make it up there, I think, so we can see. Um, I wasn't expecting to get this far up, actually. I thought it'd be a lot harder. Occasionally, you see a few little cottages, but nothing like you'd see down in uh, the other parts of Ontario. This is like, there's like three cottages there. I'm sorry, I've set of deck chairs on the island. That's it, just deck chairs. So I might go back over there on the way back and just sit there and have a coffee. Um, but in the meantime, we're like five miles away from the Montreal River, so I'm going to head up there. Your shit over. All right, I've anchored the uh, sea dew, so what I'm gonna do, I'll have a good look at what's down there. So, uh, let's get the drone out and uh, we'll get some nice shots.
What a great view. So as you just saw, we're looking straight down the uh, the dam here, going right into the Montreal River. So it's actually really cool to see. I'm glad I got the drone up and the winds just uh, held off enough. It was fighting a little bit up there. Uh, the alarm did go off once. Uh, every now and then it just gusted, but uh, overall, happy with that. Quick snack. Hmm. They're good. Walker's crisp. British Fried Bakery. Anchor up and away we go and see what else we can see as I make my way back down towards uh, where the other guys on wave are fishing. I'll we'll join them for some uh, uh, lunchtime fishing. So, uh, yeah, we'll head on down there. After a spot of lunch I went down to the south end of the lake where the other guys were and I joined them for a spot of fishing and with the, the bugs. Come. Oh, nothing. Oh, I got a to stick my glasses. Been eaten alive, got blood everywhere. On my face. And my lip. My lips got burned too. Having been attacked by insects, I decided it was time to head back to the cabin and the other guys agreed. We were just getting mauled by all the bugs due to the uh, the rain that had come and the passing thunderstorms. So we headed back early night, 9 pm, the sun's just going down. And uh, but I wasn't fully aware of the full extent of those bites until a few hours later. to you all and as you can tell I had a bit of a rough night um, black flies won basically uh, they got under my sunglasses and started biting me here under my gator as well I got big puffiness here bites up here and my eyes all swollen so pretty crappy antihistamines aren't really working just yet so we'll see how the day goes this side fine that fine that side looks like I've done a couple of rounds of a boxer uh, anyway, we're going back out. Yeah, I got one. Oh, 
got him in the back. <laughs> it's dorsal fins down thing. Like, I don't want to fight you, I'm, I'm hurt. Can you let, can you let me go? I need to glove chop this one. So I can play it out again. Well, virtually that is it for our fishing trip for the week up there. Uh, with the weather the being so hot for nearly five days, I think it was actually six, uh, we got there and it was 28 degrees and the coolest day we had and the coolest night was actually the very last night, which is the night we're actually going into very, very shortly. Every day was about 30 to 32 degrees. Uh, night wasn't too bad, uh, but you couldn't really get comfortable until like 5 a.m. because it didn't cool down until like in the morning. So uh, anyway, we survived it. So anyway, look at the weather right now. Uh, Clear skies, that is clear skies, but get, all that will change very, very shortly when we wake up the next morning as we leave. Me. <laughs> there you go. Smoke from the forest fires this morning uh, surrounding us here on the lake. We don't know exactly where the forest fires are, but we know they're close because the smell is strong and visibility is poor. That is the sun which has been obscured by all the forest fire smokes. Smokes? <laughs> Ooh, I'm tired this morning. Alright, today is leaving day. We're heading uh, home today, so I'm going to put the sea dew on the trailer while the guys wait for the boat to come and pick them all up. But the, uh, the mist from the fire fire, the fire fires? <laughs> the fire, <laughs> forest fires is uh, really evident everywhere. It's a very strong smell. Get out of here and beat the fire. All right, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. It's going to play you out with a few snaps of the area with the smoke from the forest fires. Uh, these are the very same forest fires which caused all that pollution uh, in southern Ontario, all the way down into New York City and places like that. Uh, I was up north when it happened. You saw from one of the videos that I, I played, there was thunder, there was lightning, and it didn't rain everywhere. We had over 500 lightning strikes, literally within an hour or two, within a certain radius. And that was enough to cause all these fire fi <laughs> forest fires throughout northern Quebec and Ontario and yeah there you have it anyway uh, dirty truck dirty sea dew cover from all the dust and uh, here's my sea dew with the jerry cans when I first arrived and this is the accommodation of where we're staying uh, at the dock beautiful place absolutely loved it and uh, yeah there you have it there's our little shack for the week thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it please like and subscribe see you all very soon